This is my harmonic drive. Gearboxes like this are critical in achieving incredibly high torque in compact packages. And why would I want to make this? Well, I was hanging out in my Discord server one day and had a thought. Wouldn't it be awesome if I had my own robot arm to do complex coordinated motion holding my camera to capture some crazy b-roll? Obviously, yes, that would be so cool, but being that I'm me, the only option here was designing and building my own arm from scratch. I wanted to make an arm powerful enough to hold my camera, with a reasonable range capable of smooth, somewhat accurate motion, but here's the catch. I wanted to make it as cheap as reasonably possible. A lot of DIY designs use BLDC motors with O-Drive controllers, which are really nice, but this alone costs a bare minimum of 100 bucks per joint. No thanks. I wanted to use steppers instead. A not nearly as powerful, but way cheaper alternative. But I need more torque. A lot more. So I'll need to gear it down. There's a few different ways that we can do this. One is to use belts with different size drive and driven pulleys. But unfortunately, if I wanted to get 10 newton meters from my steppers, it would look something like this. So that's not gonna work. The other option is a gearbox. These aren't nearly as efficient, but they're a lot more compact. There are some off-the-shelf options, but as you may have guessed, they're not cheap. So in order to keep to my budget and try to keep this design accessible to all, I decided to 3D print my own. And luckily, the YouTube algorithm delivers. I quickly began discovering tons of videos about Strainweave gearboxes, also known by one of their brand names, Harmonic Drives. These gearboxes use a semi-flexible tooth profile which is distorted by another component called the wave generator. As the wave generator spins around, it will slowly but surely rotate the flex spline. One problem though. These gearboxes are pretty chunky, and quite difficult to design for high torques when using 3D printing. The reason is this pretty long flexible region, which has to be long to allow it to flex. Or does it? Spoiler, no, not really. So with all the videos I watched as inspiration, I began work on my own design. But how exactly is this design different? Well, rather than directly tying the flex spline to the output, instead it uses the flex spline to drive another half of the gearbox. This allows you to use a way shorter, smaller, and simpler flex spline. Since it doesn't have any cross-sectional bracing, it can flex more easily. Of course, this is not without its downsides. But that's a problem for future me. For this first iteration, I decided to use an inside-out HD belt as the flex spline, which as you may have guessed is nice and flexy. So time to test. At first I tried using one of my OSR control boards, but one amp output just is not enough for these NEMA 23s. I'm working on designing my own motherboard, which will be for the entire robot arm, and capable of driving these NEMA 23s at maximum power, but all my components are out of stock, <laughs> so... For now, I just bought this cheap stepper driver on Amazon to get going with my testing. And since I haven't written any code yet, I'm gonna generate these pulses myself. And sweet, it works. So I guess I'll actually write that code now. And look at it go. It's pretty smooth, quiet. It seems like a really good first attempt with just one flaw. It doesn't have much torque. Oh, and it has a lot of backlash. And it's way too big to use in my robot arm. And this stepper is stalling way too easily. Um, one sec. The Amazon page lied. The steppers I'm using can handle up to 3 amps. I can't really fix this for now, so I guess I'll just fix all the mechanical issues and come back to this once I have my own motherboard. So back to CAD. And behold, the smaller version which should be capable of similar output performance while both costing less and fitting in a smaller main bearing. I also tightened up the tooth profile a bit to cut down on backlash, and I printed a test stand so I can start actually measuring performance and compare versions. So let her rip. Uh, that's, some something's wrong. See this part? That's, that's supposed to be spinning. Okay. So yeah, this part broke. So I went ahead, made some changes, and printed a new wave generator. And we're back. So, time for another torque test. The length of the moment arm I'm using for this is 200 millimeters to point of contact. So, 
using the force of the scale, we've recorded 6 newton meters before maxing it out. Not bad, but it's clear I need a better way to test these. So I bought a 20 kilogram load cell and threw together a fancy little jig here. And then I wrote way too much code to allow me to autonomously load and cycle test these gearboxes. Was that part necessary? No. But I did it anyways. Okay, so rather than testing that last gearbox again, let's just jump straight to the next design. And this script I'm reading says that it worked perfectly and definitely didn't stall under no load. So you might notice that this design is now using a 3D printed strain wave gear, in addition to using a new tooth profile. Tooth? Tooth? And you'd be right. As it turns out, the nice and flexy belt was a little too flexy and was introducing a lot of slop and compliance into the output of the final gearbox. So I went ahead and modeled a new flex spline with a proper involuted gear profile. Is this actually the right way to do a strain wave gear? I'm really not too sure, so if anybody here is an expert in designing gears and gearboxes, please let me know in the comments because I'm pretty curious. But at the very least, this tooth profile is a lot deeper, so it should transfer more torque before slipping. Should. Point is, I got the dimensions wrong on that last one, so the wave generator was pushing way too hard into the flex spline and distorting the housing significantly. So, after a few more revisions... We arrive here, the final-ish form factor, but still far from the final iteration. This design has almost no backlash, pretty good compliance considering it's 3D printed, and can hit 10 newton meters of torque with this motor. And so much more. Not that much more. But it works, and it works pretty well. Okay, now it works pretty well. So let's get testing with it. I set this first test to stop at one newton meter so that I could figure out how much the gearbox is deflecting under minimal load. As it turns out, not too much. Then I set it to go as hard as it can. Yeah, not bad, not really not bad at all. Being able to apply 10 newton meters is only good if it can keep doing that time and time again. So let's get life testing. I wrote this script to cycle the arm at no load and periodically test to the maximum torque just to make sure it can still hit it, and it'll keep doing this until it either fails or I get bored and stop it. Unfortunately in this case, about 600 cycles later, it suddenly started slipping like crazy. So I took it apart, and it turns out the wave generator was once again slipping on the motor shaft. So I made a few tweaks, printed a new part, put it back in, and off again. But now it's only hitting 6 newton meters, which is pretty weird. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I must have accidentally modified some parameters before I reprinted the wave generator, but I'm just going to go with it for now and see how it does. And 1500 cycles later, the torque output only slightly dropped, which is really not bad. And taking it apart to inspect, I discovered something shocking. Yeah, it broke a little bit. It looks like mostly this is just layer delamination, so I'm going to reprint this part of the housing at a higher temperature, and hopefully that will help improve durability. And this new print got back up to 8 newton meters, which is good, we're getting back to where we were. So just a few more tweaks left before this design is ready to go, but at this point it's probably pretty obvious my motor isn't going to have enough torque to actually test this gearbox to failure, which is annoying for the video, but I guess it's a good problem to have. So I'm just going to put in a little elbow grease. At first I tried using this load cell to apply force by hand to the arm while it's holding position, but I was only able to exert 17 newton meters this way. So I resorted to using my personally calibrated load cells. And after exerting exactly 40 pounds, the gearbox survived, and it's still spinning smoothly and has barely any backlash. Not what I was expecting. So one more try, this time I'm not stopping until it stops. And finally, after at least 50 pounds of force, Yay! yeah. Whew. Not too surprising, the flex spline just sheared down the middle. 
and that part failure likely led to damaging the tooth profiles on both halves of the housing. Unfortunate, but luckily my robot arm is never going to see this much force, so I'm not concerned. But if for some reason this is an issue, I did buy some nylon filament to try to make some stronger flex blinds. I've just heard that printing nylon is scary, so I'm going to avoid that until I absolutely need to. And now that I've destroyed my last gearbox, I decided to print all the parts for a new one. Which as it turns out is a great excuse for me to show you exactly everything that goes into this gearbox. So here's all the parts. Takes about 4 hours to print, then it just takes a few M3 bolts, square nuts, a little bit of glue, and and just for my own sanity, let's put this through one final torque test and see where we're at. And thankfully we are back to 10 newton meters. So what's next with this project? Well, I'm going to be building up a few more of these gear drives, then I'm going to be putting a lot more time into CAD working on the arm. It still has a long way to go, but I'm really excited to see just where it's going. I think I should be able to make a very capable arm and hopefully do it all for under $500. But anyway, all of that is for a future video. As always, a huge thanks to all my Patreons. If it weren't for all their support, videos like this just would not be possible. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future projects. And let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions or feedback for me. Until next time.